grew up in the family of skywriting. That's just a little kid, that's all I knew. Just like being an artist in the sky. I'm Greg Stennis, and I own a company called Skytypers with my son, Steven Stennis. My dad was one of the original skywriters. He started in 1931. The one airplane travels a big circle if he's gonna make an O, and that takes a lot of time to do that. And he decided, hey, there's gotta be a faster way to do this. I'll just do it with a bunch of airplanes. And so he came up with the method of sky typing. Five airplanes flying in formation. For instance, if we're gonna make an eye, everybody lets out just one puff. There's your eye. If you wanna turn that into an L, it's one puff, plus the bottom guy lets out three more puffs. There's your L. This is a very specialized form of flying. Most of my pilots have got you know, like 10,000 flying hours, so they're very experienced. We fly AA-5B Tiger planes. When we fly, it's roughly 45 minutes to get up to altitude, which is 10,000 feet. A typical sky typing message is 20 characters, sometimes 25, and that's roughly five miles in length. Each letter is the size of the Empire State Building, 1,200 feet tall. They're the biggest ads in the world, and you can't miss them. The whole sky becomes your billboard. I do this because not only is it fun, because I love flying, but I like the the accomplishment of what we do, because the people we fly for, they're all thrilled. We've got something like 120 years of skywriting in the family. My dad trained me, and I've trained my son, and I'm very proud about the whole thing. Just to let you know that the flight time is going to be roughly a, a minute and 20 seconds today. This is Westray Island Airport. And this is Papa Westray Island Airport. They're only 1.7 miles away from each other and are connected by the world's shortest commercial flight. The average flying time is about 80 seconds. These two islands are a part of the Orkney Islands in northern Scotland. This archipelago is defined by jagged coastlines and its obvious lack of trees. There are 70 islands in total, only 20 of them are inhabited. On some islands, like Papa Westre, the population is less than 100. To get around up here, most people fly. On this plane, the inter-island Logan Air Route. Colin here, he's the head pilot. Okay. Hey, I'm Colin McAllister, I'm the senior pilot. The aircraft we fly in Orkney carries eight passengers. They're the highest uh, that we reach would be about 350 feet altitude, so it's quite low. It flies at around about 150 miles an hour and it has the aerodynamics of a brick, but it is super for what we do uh, in the islands. So why does this flight exist? Because there are so few people in the Orkney Islands, building bridges doesn't make financial sense. They just wouldn't get enough use. So if you live up here, there are only two ways to get around. One, you can take this ferry, which is super, super slow. Or two, you can fly. My name is Kate and I live on Orkney mainland, but I fly out to several of the islands teaching music on a weekly basis. Once every three weeks, I'm flying the shortest flight to get to work. The flight is used almost like a bus service. It acts like a bus route, but it's not. It takes a team. Okay. From the two air traffic controllers. Okay, that's too clear to land. To the four firefighters, they all work together to help keep the flight safe. 
Over the years I've flown somewhere between four and five thousand times between Westry and Papa Westry. It is community spirit that drives the people who work uh, at the airfields. The world's shortest flight has been around for a long time. This year I've been flying it for 50 years in Orkney. At this point it's a well-oiled machine. Our only complaint? No drink service. <laughs>
This man who lives in the middle of nowhere, who lives 25 miles from this bar with this man inside, who owns a bunch of guns, works with machines, and made this thing. Who is this man? My name is Ivo Zdarsky, and this is where I live. As you've gathered, this man isn't from around Lucent. He grew up in Czechoslovakia before the fall of the USSR. He didn't like it much. It's kind of hard to do anything. The communists were in power there. You cannot have your own business. It's kind of difficult to fly there, so I kind of didn't feel like I could be myself. He really wanted to leave the country, but it wasn't easy. There was an iron curtain. They like have a machine gun towers and barbed wire to keep you in. They like to keep you. So when he was 24, he escaped the country the only way he knew how, by flying across the border in his self-built airplane. So I drove up close to the border between Austria and sometime like at three o'clock in the morning, I took off and I just glided over to Austria and, and I found myself at uh, Vienna International Airport and I landed there. And then uh, I just showed them my expired passport and I asked for asylum. And the world took notice. I guess they had never seen anything like that before. So I think they liked it. I liked it. Avo then moved to Los Angeles and built up a successful airplane propeller business. But even LA couldn't fit his big ideas. I kinda needed a place to test my other idea, which is hard to do it in the middle of the city. That's how I found uh, this place in Utah. Uh, it was for sale, so I bought it. And I've been here for uh, like eight years. And what was Ivo's big idea that brought him to Lucen? Well, it's behind that door over there. Inside sits an eight propeller flying machine, able to lift off and land vertically. It's basically an airplane helicopter hybrid of sorts. It's kind of funny looking, but the damn thing actually flies. So what's Avo's next big project? A solar-powered aircraft? An innovative propeller design? Some kind of new way to fly? The next big one is that uh, spear gun idea, which actually, it works better than I thought. That doesn't always work that way. Sometimes I get really bad ideas. <laughs> Even while inventing new spear guns and the like, Ivo still finds the time to get out of the house. In fact, that's him over there, hiking on the side of a mountain. It's just him, nature, and his customized rifle. I take the gun with me because of the mountain lions. Wow. However treacherous the hike, it's always worth it. You get a good view of Lucen. It actually looks pretty nice from here, don't it? You know, I still wonder, why did that Darkling Beetle ever leave this place? Maybe Lucen wasn't right for the little guy. Maybe it's escaping to the next place where it can be itself. For Ivo, though, looks like this might be his last stop. I kinda realized that this is what I always wanted. I kept escaping until I escaped to Lucen, and now I don't have anywhere else to escape. Like, now I'm stuck here. That was a great answer. <laughs> well, no, it's also a truth if you think about it. 